This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Here beside me is Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon at Bumper to Bumper Radio. We're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you got car questions, we've got car answers. So we encourage you to give us a call and give us a call early at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. Or you can text us if you want to 411-923 if you're the shy type. As long as you're not driving, you can text. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we got some fact or fiction. Of course, we're taking your phone calls. It's 602-277-5827. And text and mechanic in a bottle, Matt. Do you have any of that at your shop? It's got the, the little magic genie that... He's got to turn his mic on. I'm all messed up over here, huh? Got the little, I got the little magic genie in the bottle. You rub it, rub it, and he comes out. And what do you want? And I mean, I wish it was that that nice. I can see how people can be confused with with you know. There's always somebody selling something to you know the quick diet, and you know you can lose 100 pounds by Thanksgiving if you need to, and all these these other quick fixes. And you imagine. Walk into the auto parts store, you think you have a problem, and you look, and there's this wall. Entire wall. It's like wallpaper. It's, it goes the whole length of the thing of all these additives. Or better yet, you're at the car wash. Maybe the guy wants to see if he wants some foo-foo juice for the gas tank or, or, or for the oil. Or even, you know, hey, at my shop, we sell additives. But uh, so I think I strongly believe in some. Um, others are a complete waste of money. And and I'm talking even for fuel system, for example. There's fuel injector cleaner that's good, and there's fuel injector cleaner. You might as well just go take a lighter and set your twenty dollar bill on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of those additives will burn. You can't catch them on fire. If you need to use them for fire starter, you yeah. Know? <laughs> well, the problem is you'd have to buy it to then pour it on your twenty dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, what is snake oil when it comes to automotive additives? And there is literally a plethora of those additives. And then, what is actually functioning stuff? And I couldn't. When you and I went about five years ago, we were yeah, taking yeah. pictures of all the additives down there. In some of the additives, you're going to have fuel system additives. You're going to have oil additives. You're going to have transmission additives. You're going to have power steering additives. You're going to have coolant additives. And I, I'm thinking, you know, doesn't can't I just eat my vitamins? I mean, isn't there vitamins already in the oil that I put in my car? Isn't there already vitamins in the gasoline that I put in my car? Well, not really, because those are the. I mean, if you want to compare it like that, you're talking about your meal. Mm -hmm. Your meal is your fuel. Yeah, your steak and your broccoli and your rice. That's a balanced meal. But now you take your vitamins. Beer too. Beer, yes. <laughs> but then you take your vitamins. You yeah, know, you kind of they supplement maybe what you're what yeah. you're what you're eating because you're not getting everything that you need. And then that gasoline goes in all different types of cars and do all different type of cars eat the same thing. You know, we all have a little bit different chemistry. And the reason I bring that up because there is so much the need for additives has gotten real real with this gasoline direct injection. Yes. I mean, that's created all kinds of new problems, and, you know, the technology's out, the cars got more efficient, uh, way better gas mileage, better power, all that stuff happened, but a whole new set of problems and a whole new it, set of additives. It's like a lot of things. You fix one problem and you create two. <laughs> you know? <laughs> one step but, forward, two but, back. But let's break it down a little bit, and a couple of these will go together, and, and, and we'll try and spread it out in the time we have. So you have fuel system additives. So... You could have your stay bill and, and things that you put in the car or in gasoline if it's going to be parked or stored for a long time. Those are good, and that's not what we're talking about, although that is one additive. Then uh, with fuel system still, we have fuel injection system cleaner where it's supposed to clean the fuel injectors. But I always say it's not necessarily the injectors that get dirty anymore. We're just using the fuel injector to deliver this cleaning solution to the to the car so that we can maybe clean some carbon, remove deposits from the fuel system and and one that comes to mind is like Tecron. Yes, that's in the Chevron gasoline. QT has great gas, Costco has great gas. They all have these Tecron type um 
a little bit of a uh, little bit in the recipe, so to speak. You know, it's in there just enough to do the bare minimum. Sometimes we need a boost on that. Stuff. A little and bit of Drano. Are, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and those are good, but you've got to use a quality product. And I guess the toughest thing is how do you find a quality product? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the big deal was, you know, my mother would buy a new car when I was a kid, and my grandfather would come up to visit, and he would bring a bottle that's Slick 50. And that bottle looked really impressive, you know, and it was like, oh, this can do all wonderful things for your engine of your car. You know, but that was one that people used for decades to find out, well, now they get sued because it was a lot of a lot of uh, snake oil to it, a lot of yeah. claims that didn't really happen. So, but back to gas, I mean, there's some of these cars are actually requiring that now. Yeah, you look at some of the Hyundais and Kias, and the, the common thing is if you if you heard the acronym GDI or direct injection and your car has that, you have a car that's suspect to some fuel system problems and, and will, tr- will parlay out a fuel system and then go into engine oil additives. There's a number of different reasons you might want to add oils or additives to the engine. The first one that I can think of and that we actually do in the shop is we put some stuff in the oil to clean what's in there. What's happening? Maybe the old oil has gotten sludged up. And, and I'm not talking sludge where you pull the, pull the dipstick out and that oil looks black necessarily and, the, and there's carbon on the stick. But you can't see a lot of that build up on the, on the rings and on the landings on the pistons and such. And, and that's what needs to get cleaned out. So there's that type of additive before the oil change. There's the after the oil change additive, maybe like your STP type, the really thick honey. You want to thicken up the viscosity of the oil. But then there's the additives that are just... The little secret ingredients that are put in oil, all the different detergents and additive packages and antioxidants and stabilizers, that's the you know the second can that you put in after the oil change. Yes, it's already in the oil. And people say, oh, if you needed that, it'd already be in the oil. Well, then it, the quart of oil would be twenty dollars. Yeah. So so there's there's some of those that are they're very good to use. But what are the bad ones, for example, Dave? And the transmission. And you can talk mm-hmm. about transmission, but it's still the same scare. Still applies to the power steering in many cases, or the engine oil you put in stop leak or an additive in the transmission. Well, the, the transmission thing gets me because because people go to the auto parts store, and everyone knows they'll plug into your car and tell you something that's wrong with it or give you some sort of idea. So they plug into it and they say, "Oh, it looks like you're having some sort of tran- transmission problem," because they get a transmission type of code and they say we've got these transmission additives i get nervous when you're using additives to fix problems in the transmission so they give you an additive i've literally had people come into my shop and they said yeah we went to the auto parts store and they sold us an additive and we put it in our car and i go where's the additive i'd like to read the bottle it's kind of like your doctor well what are you taking he's going to say let me see let me see the bottle so i can see what you're taking and you look at the bottle and it says you know this is not for cvt transmissions well that's exactly the transmission they have in their car but somebody at the auto parts store said hey here's what you should put in your car and by doing that they've taken a simple electric problem and they've now created a transmission problem that they didn't have before so i get nervous about people pouring stuff into the cars and car manufacturers have too so they remove the dipstick from the car because now they're warranting these transmissions for 100,000 miles, and you can't even find a dipstick under the hood anymore. It's a pain in the neck to fill them up, and that's what I think is one of the main reasons they did that. They, you think they wanted to keep people out. Yeah, they don't want people tinkering with their transmission, so people all think their transmission is this sealed piece, right. and I think that's where that came from. But it's we don't want people monkeying with our transmission that we got a warranty. You know, the last thing we want them doing is pouring in a bottle of transmission Slick 50. I mean, the, the best additive for the wrong reason is no good. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that's what you're saying. Because what happens, I mean, you take a transmission, for example. Maybe you've got a um, – the gasket material, let's say, is a, is a rubberized cork. Okay, and maybe that got rolled or got pinched or you know twenty five thousand miles ago when it was service last. The transmission works great. You've got a little bit of a symptom. Maybe it doesn't work right because it's low on fluid, not because there's anything wrong with the transmission. Then you go get the expert opinion from the kid at the auto parts store. He sells you a stop leak. Well, what that stop leak does, it takes all the rubber seals and all the components and it causes them to swell just a little bit. Because if you've got a gasket out of place, it, it, but it's not going to swell the, the cork, right? Right. So all you've done now, you haven't helped the problem that you had, and you've now very potentially ruined the transmission because every other seal in there that had nothing wrong with it has just grown in size by 15%. Right, Dave? I mean, yes, so. that's, that's exactly. I don't think I could have put it that well. You should come work at the transmission shop. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. I'll leave the transmission expert to Tri-City Transmission. But what, what's the other thing? Cooling system we see, radiators, um, 
there's again there's additives that help the coolant. There's a surficant that helps the uh, helps the uh, I think I pronounced, I think I pronounced that wrong, yeah. But it, it, uh, you know, it helps the water. They call it water wetter. It just helps the water come in contact with all of the metal. You can have water flowing through the engine, and believe it or not, it's not actually touching the entire surface. So those are things to help keep the engine cool. You might have an additive to help with the uh, enhance the package of the detergents or, or the additives in the cooling system. But again, stop leak, that's another nightmare, right? So there is a point here, and there's stop leak for all kinds of things, and I wish we had more time to get into it. But there is good additives for your car, and there's bad additives for your car, and a good additive misused is a bad additive. You know, it's taken like, you go and you take all these vitamins that you didn't need, and you make yourself sick because you took way too much vitamin D <laughs> yeah. or something. Your pee's all yellow and stinky, you know? <laughs> so. Bree's shaking her head in there, but, you, you know, know, the one there's... The one additive I don't think they make is for the battery. Is there any additives for batteries? I mean, I think my grandpa told me you could, like, drop aspen in the cells or something when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much you can do for your battery as far as additives. The, I mean, they do sell the little things you put on top of the battery. That, but if you get a good battery, like an interstate battery, you don't need all those little additives and the things on top that help keep them clean and they look fancy and it's an extra little sales. So, uh, it, just make sure you've got an interstate battery in your car. Good you battery, know. great warranty, coast to coast. I mean, that's why we that's why we sell them, and that's the thing is you, you can can you get more life out of your battery by doing something? Not really. Well, you can by keeping it clean, no, keeping sure. the area around it clean. But but yeah, there's no there's no miss no genie in the bottle for the battery. I think just good maintenance and, and starting off with a good battery. So anyhow, when we come back, we've got Brad and Rose and more open lines at six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. 602-277-KTR. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Get ready for the Good Guys 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th to the 20th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 3,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and classics on display. Put your car and driving skills to the test in the Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition and earn a shot to compete in the Duel in the Desert Autocross Shootout Final. Plus, bring out those late models on Sunday for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration. Open to all years of American-made or powered vehicles. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. And Matt, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Someone's calling in. They've got a Datsun. And you can tell that Bree's not familiar with the Datsun because she spelled it D O T S O N. <laughs> that was way before Bree's time. My grandfather had a Datsun pickup truck, and I think he probably got it to 600,000 miles. I mean, he loved that truck, and he would do mo- no anything he could do to keep that car lasting. And he he was definitely kind of you could tell he grew up on a farm somewhere. Because he had all kinds of inventions to keep that thing going. <laughs> there was a little bit of bailing wire in a few places. I've had a couple of 280Zs and used to work on some 240Zs a lot. Uh, you know, you used to hear these old cars. And I, I'll be interested to see what, what Rose has with it's a 280 or a, or in that time it would have been a, a 240 probably or maybe a 510. People think of these old Datsun four-door thing, but those are a very desirable uh, type of sports car now, you know, <laughs> so. Well, let, let's let's talk to Rose in Mesa on a 1974 Datsun, D-O-T-S-O-N, Datsun. How can we help you, Rose? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, fellas. Um, I don't know uh, exactly what the motor or whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not good with cars. But, Neither are uh, we, but just don't tell anybody. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, I was wondering. It's a 74 Dodson, and it's um, a station wagon. Nice. And it happens to be fabulous. And, uh, of course, it needs, you know, needs stuff. 
um, I had at one time a Volkswagen that I adored, and um, what what knocked me out was when I uh, first turned on the Datsun. It had the same type of tone that my Volkswagen Superbug, it was a 71, had. Mm -hmm. And it's like humming. It was really cool. So I said, this is my car. Anyway, um, uh, on shocks for it, it, it seems to be without much. What do you recommend? On the, on the Datsun, even the original equipment manufacturer on that car was probably a brand called KYB. Um, so you're you're in the Mesa area. I think this is a, a perfect job for Mesa Auto Works or, you know, if you again, if you have your own mechanic, great stick with those guys, especially if they've been taking care of this car for you since 1974. But on that car, if you came into Virginia Auto Service, I would be looking at a KYB shock. And uh, the thing that I would say on that car, too, if we learned this lesson on – that's a very lightweight car. You don't need a heavy-duty shock. We learned this lesson putting you know, putting shocks on Toyota. People come in with their pickup truck, and they're very light, and they say, oh, I, I need a really heavy-duty shock. Well, that thing makes that thing really stiff. Yeah, you don't want to – Driving too around much town, rebound. You're, just, you're just bouncing. There's no there's no ability for the thing to even dampen in, in a horrible ride. So a quality shock, but heavy duty doesn't mean better. And, and right. I think that, I'm looking I'm, at a picture. I pulled up a picture that said I know that's a, that's a cream puff, man. That was a beautiful wagon back in the day. You never you never know. Maybe it's, she's got the thing. You know what's in the <clears throat> what's interesting about shocks? The shocks in in Matt. Maybe you know more about this than I do, but. Like Probably. if I go buy a KYB, no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> I just said that make you feel good. Uh, <laughs> you know, these KYB shocks for for the for the second, you know, the original set of shocks came with brand new springs and everything on it. Now that now the car is a little older, I think they tighten them up a little bit to make them to deal with that older vehicle type of feel. And I think Lance was telling me that Lance, yeah, smile. they We're do they do some different things on the replacement shock to help compensate for some of the wear and stuff. And we are going to have one of the guys from the K KYB come in and talk to us about shocks. We we dabbled in shocks and struts earlier in, in, uh, in October, but we barely touched the surface. There's so much more to, to the manufacturer and, and installation of a good shock. For sure. Hey, Rose, thanks for the call. Uh, you can get a hold of us at 602-277-5827. Let's go with Brad in Phoenix. He's got a 2007 or, yeah, Lexus uh, LS460. How can we help you, Brad? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Great, thanks guys. Off the top of the show, you're talking about the additives, and I've always been curious. Um, my car requires premium gasoline, the high octane, and um, got a boat also that requires that. Sometimes at a marina, I can't always get that. And I was reading on one of those uh, Lucas Lucas uh, fuel treatments that apparently you're supposed to clean your injectors and all, but it said on the bottle that you don't need to use premium gasoline with this additive. It raises the octane level, and I was just curious: is that legit? You know, I can't speak for the Lucas product itself, but there are some additives that are octane boosters, so I'm, I, I'm sure it does. At first, when you said you don't need to use a premium product, premium gasoline with it, I thought you were going to say it's not required just to make the product work, and in that case, it's it's not. Um, but if it claims to raise the octane, I guess I'd look at a couple of, of them and 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 see what the best one is. But I don't have any reason to believe that that it wouldn't if if cause that's a pretty simple claim and, and I, i've always wondered about octane boost and octane boost is not like you're at it's just it's the rate octane is really the rate of the which burn. the fuel burns so an octane booster may slow down the burn a little bit you know is, is what i'm thinking and and so i don't know if i don't well, know if, a chemist. But if the boat want if the engine wants 91 or 94 mm -hmm. and you're only putting in 89 i don't think you can hurt it by putting in an octane uh, a mm -hmm. booster, you know what I mean. So now, as far as the marine stuff is, is other cleaners and additives, and in the marine environment, especially now, maybe you're using the boat during the summertime, but not the winter. Um, I just drew a sea uh, foam. Sea foam yeah, is, a, is a great cleaner. It was developed out of the marine industry. Uh, I think some guy in his shed in Minnesota actually came up with this thing years ago. But it's great cleaner. It's one of the cleaners that I like, even in a modern car. Great and a boat to help keep things dry and keep the moisture out of the system and keep the fuel system clean. 
Well, thanks so much for the call, Brad. 602-277-5827. Some guy invented it in the shed. Uh, you know, something like But I want to say one more thing back to Brad on that Lexus. If your car, and everybody listening, if your car wants premium fuel, you really need to use the premium fuel. You can actually, you can put in the lower octane fuel and get worse fuel mileage and worse performance because the car is not set to burn that fuel. The same thing goes true if your car doesn't want high-octane fuel, don't waste your money on it. You mm-hmm. don't need it. You used to have to get the high-octane fuel to get the cleaners. But now all the fuels, QT, they've got the top-tier fuel, Costco, Sinclair, you name it. They've all got the, they're all got the gasoline additive and the carbon-defeating stuff in all their grades. Real good. Let's go to Terry in Chandler. He's got a 2014, looks like a Chevy how can we help you, Terry? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi there. What we have is a Chevy 2014 Sonic. When she, my daughter went to turn the heater on for the first time, there's no heat. I haven't had time to take it in anywhere yet. I'm not getting any error codes on the phone, on the um, console. Okay. Do you have, does the car have a temperature gauge? Does it have a what? A temperature gauge on the dashboard that shows how hot, uh, yes, how hot or cold the engine is? When the car, yes, when the when you say it doesn't make any heat, is that first thing in the morning, or is that after that temperature gauge was up in its normal operating range? Um, that's even after she's been driving it for at least fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay. Well, there's probably going to be. There, there, I was going to go one area. In in one area, you would get a check engine light. Would be if the engine wasn't getting to operating temperature long enough and, or fast enough, and it doesn't go into closed loop control. Which is part of the fuel. I mean, part of the fuel management. But you need to, um, you know, the engine needs to be warmed, heated up in order to make heat for the heater. So I don't think you have an engine problem. I think you probably have a heater control problem. Right. And there's okay. there's a blend door that's going to mix hot and cold air to give you that warm air, and you could have an issue with that, and that's causing it from happening. So man, Matt, I got to research. I'm going. What the heck is a Sonic? You gotta Google that and show me a picture of that. Show thing. me Sonic. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a not little, coming to mind. You know, it's all a these compact. You used to see them down in Mexico all the time. Re- yeah. Remember when the Chevy had a square key and a round key, and even your four had a square key and a round key, and now the keys are just really weird, and the keys sometimes don't even have a. You don't even stick them. You don't hole. have a key. Yeah, right? it's not even there. It's is just it, it's a fob. Is, it, you know, is it even a key anymore? Where's your fob? So. Just one of the many, many ways cars are changing, and we want to keep you up in the loop at bumper to bumper radio.com. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Roger Bland with the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Association, ATRA. As a transmission industry advocate, I travel throughout North America, studying transmission shops, looking for the best of the best that our industry has to offer. Professionally, ethically run shops that are proud to display the Acra logo. I was recently in Arizona because I had heard from more than one source that I had to check out Tri-City Transmission right here in Tempe. Folks, I've been in the transmission industry for over 25 years, and I'm here to tell you that Tri-City is the type of transmission shop we're proud to call an ATRA member. Not only does Tri-City Transmission meet the stringent code of ethics set forth for every member of the association, they also have an extraordinary approach to solving their customers' problems. You see, they don't just focus on what it is they produce, transmissions. Their true concern is about fixing their problem. And take it from me, that's a big difference. To learn more about Tri-City Transmission, find them at TriCityTransmission.com. That's TriCityTransmission.com. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby, owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Arizona's news station. News station. K 
KTAR on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic now. Good morning. It's 1130. I'm Holiday Moore. Here's our top story. The Arizona Department of Public Service and Tempe Police Department have canceled that Amber Alert for Sandra and Jasmine Campbell, the three and eight-year-old girls missing since 1030 last night. The suspect, David Fuller, is believed to be the father of the oldest girl. He is now in custody facing possible kidnapping charges. And the two girls and their dogs, taken from a Circle K last night, are safe and unharmed. After meeting with President Barack Obama, President-elect Donald Trump told the Wall Street Journal he's open to simple simply amending the law and in an interview with 60 Minutes, he suggested two of the most popular provisions of the Obamacare plan may be safe from the chopping block. Those being allowing children to stay on their parents' plan until they're 26 years old and the other preventing providers from denying coverage because of pre-existing conditions. Sting will be playing the first concert at the Bataclan Theater in Paris today, one day before the one-year anniversary of the horrific attacks that killed 90 people in the theater. Sting will donate the proceeds from the concert to charities of victims. Let's go and check on our traffic with our friend Mike Daniels in the RMEagle.com Traffic Center. We still had that wreck off right inside the tunnel, 10 eastbound east of 5th Avenue, and a crash at Greenway Road west of Cotton Lane. This report brought to you by Verge Ford, a dealer you can trust for over 70 years, located off US 60 and Mason Drive or at vergeford.com. I am Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Thanks, Mike. Mostly sunny this weekend and unseasonably warm with the high in the mid-80s. Overnight lows dropping to the lower 60s. It's currently 79 degrees in Anthem. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Holiday Moore on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Arizona, an amazing state for outdoor recreation and exploration. Full of mountains, lakes, streams, forests, and of course, our beautiful deserts. Hunting, fishing, camping. If it's about the outdoors, we've got it covered. KTAR invites you to get outdoors with Mike Russell. Today at noon, KTAR News on 92.3 FM and on every device with the KTAR app. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed. Not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection. They do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, GoodWorks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. GoodWorks Auto Repair in Tempe or visit us at GoodWorksAutoRepair.com. The good guys are back with the 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th through the 20th. Come on out and enjoy three huge days of hot rod and fun featuring over 3,000 classic hot rods, muscle cars, trucks, and customs on display. Visit vendor exhibit, shop the swap meet, and cars for sale corral, and enjoy free fun stuff for the kids. And don't miss your chance to experience the earth-shaking Nitro Thunderfest Dragster Exhibition and see the good guys' top 12 cars and trucks of the year presented by McGuire's up close and in person. For tickets and details, visit goodcashguys.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at My Car Hurt Dot com gas or diesel foreign or domestic if your car hurts take it to Kurt this is bumper to bumper radio KTAR news on 923 FM welcome back to bumper to bumper radio I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen and together we are KTR car guys every Saturday from 11 to noon. And we're taking phone calls to help you with your car at 602-277-5827. 
602-277-KTAR. Matt, and it's fall. It's November. October is really my favorite month, but November is pretty good, too. The cool thing about it is what the events that are going on. Well, we've, we've got a lot going on. We've obviously got NASCAR this weekend, but that will be long gone by next weekend when the real deal is in town, which is the Good Guys Southwest National Good Guys Car Show that's here twice a year. It's out at Westworld, and I believe we have Betsy Bennett from Good Guys on the line. Are you there, Betsy? I'm here. So everybody hears the Good Guys. They see all these hot rods cruising around town right now because the weather's so nice. You want to take a minute and tell us what is the Good Guys 19th Southwest, Southwest Nationals. What's what's going sure. on? Sure. So this is actually um, the end of our season for the year, so our season finale. We'll have about 3,000 hot rods, customs, classics, trucks, muscle cars, all the way up through 72. We have cars pre-registered coming in from 20 different, 28 different states. So lots of people coming into the Valley of the Sun. I don't blame them. I'm up in Portland, Oregon, where it's raining. So I totally understand that desire to be down in the sunshine. And this event really is the culmination of our season, of a year long of hard work, and we kind of bring in all the bells and whistles. We've got the du- the duel in the desert. We've got the top twelve. So a lot of cool things for people to come out and experience next weekend. And what what is the duel in the desert? So the duel in the desert is our final autocross shootout for the year. So at each event throughout the year, we qualify one finalist to come to the shootout. And then we have a few race-in spots that are up for grabs uh, next weekend as well. But the end of that will be a 32-car field that will run off in eliminations until we have one final, um, what we call the autocrosser of the year, which becomes part of our top 12. And they'll win cash and prizes, and it's a really cool, um, fun experience on Saturday afternoon to watch these guys go head-to-head. Yeah, I, I love watching the autocross racing, and I think what people need to understand is you don't have to be the car nut and the, you know, have the the motor oil in your veins to go out and enjoy this this car show. Right. I mean, Betsy, you said cars all the way up through 1974. I mean, that's a long time ago. Uh, or 70, yeah. You know, and. and um, you know, so these cars, I love going back and you see the cars that your parents had when you were a kid, but these things aren't like the parents' car was when you were a kid. It's all chromed and got great paint and all these. I think they're just really fun to see. There's something for everyone, the kids and, and everybody. Right, right. And then that's really what we try and do is we try to make our events kind of a festival-type atmosphere. So you've got the food booths, you've got entertainment, you've got stuff for the kids to do, just a lot of cool um, things to do. And even if you're not a car fanatic, like a lot of people are kind of on the fence about that, there's something just really spectacular about seeing 3,000 classic cars in one place. Absolutely. Hey, where can people get tickets, details, get the rundown on what's going on next week? Sure. They can go to our website, which is good-guys.com. You have to have that hyphen in there. That will give you um, access to that website. There's an event page for the 19th Southwest Nationals. There's event hours, ticket prices, um, the event schedule is there. If someone's coming in from out of town and needs a hotel, there's a hotel list. So lots of great information on that website. All righty. Well, thank you for joining us, Betsy. We appreciate it, and we're looking forward to being out there next weekend, and I'm sure the weather will be beautiful. And I hope so. We're be, hoping so. <laughs> should be a good time. All righty. Well, we'll see you then. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank, thank you. Yeah, the car show. I, I like going to the car show. There's so much, so much cool stuff to see. And you know, I'm a bit of a gearhead. I've heard, I've been told, but not as much as you. You're more of a gearhead than I think I am. A little bit. Yeah, I, I enjoy. It. I mean, I was up at SEMA last week or a week and a half ago, whenever that was, and that was just overload. There's so much cool stuff there, but you're just. It's too much. I mean, <laughs> it's too much to even just take in, and, and that's why I like, especially the good guys thing. I mean, there's just lot, lots of neat stuff to see. Well, we got to get to these phones. We got Jacob, we got Mike, we got Jason, we got Dale, and we got another Mike in Peoria with an 05 Sorrento. And uh, let's, see. how can we help you, Mike? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi guys, listen to you all the time. Work the weekend, so you're part of my weekend. Oh, cool. Um, the a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned uh, two different types of repairs that cars have. One of them was unique repair, and the other one was kind of, I guess you, I don't know, you don't remember the word, the term, but it was like a standard repair. Pattern. Where it's just, you know, the stuff that happens on that particular model. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my wife wants a Sorento, and uh, one of those we're, we're looking to buy 
and uh, pick us up another used car, uh, 05, 06, 07, 08. And I'm wondering what history you may know about that particular model. You know, on the on the 2005 Kia, I, I don't, off the top of my head, those Hyundais and Kias, I think they're great cars. They've really, really improved from when they first started being imported to the U.S. But that car, like any other car, you can go online and you can find anything you want. Somebody complaining about it in a blog or a forum or whatever. My suggestion on uh, whether it's an 05 Kia, an 05 Mercedes, 74 Datsun, you go and you have the car inspected, have it checked out, have a good conversation with the mechanic. This is an inspection that you should probably want to pay for because someone's going to use their time and you want to get value. You know, things that are free oftentimes don't have much value. You want them to look over this used car, find everything wrong with it, all the maintenance that's due or maybe even neglected. You know what you're buying and then talk to them about those pattern failures. What do they see in the car? Because, and, 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 again, you can come up with anything you want to and find an excuse not to buy any car out there. <laughs> right, Dave? For I mean, sure. you're smiling mm -hmm. over there like you know, it's, it's – Right. No, I, I, I agree with that. I don't. There's nothing that just jumps out at me, 05 Sorento. I know, know they have all these particular problems. But since you are buying a used car, the biggest thing is you, you don't want to buy a car that's been just neglected and just wore out, you know. Uh, and there's two types of people. There's people who use car, you know, use the cars. I mean, they, they run use this, it up. Yeah, yeah, use it up. And then there's people, you know, a little pride of ownership that take care of it. That's the kind of person that you want to buy a car from. So anyhow, thanks for the call, Mike. We got Mike again in Sun Lakes with an 81 Datsun. And Bree's getting closer about spelling the word Datsun. This one is D-O-X-S-O-N. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, one of those long ones. How can we help you, Mike? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, I think you just answered my question with the last caller. Sure. What's nope. that? Ask it anyway. Well, <laughs> I was wondering if there's uh, Datsun Z280Z. Uh-huh. Do they still make parts for them? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I know one that's for sale, and I know someone might be interested, but I, I, uh, it doesn't run. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you can find, you know, there's all kind. Those are the cars that are actually going to be coming back into being popular again. Uh, is is those 280Zs? I mean, we've seen the Camaros and all the all the um, all the other American hot rods going, and you're starting to see the Volkswagen buses. I I predict in the next three or four years at Bear Jackson, you're going to be starting to see the 240Zs and the 280Zs rolling across there for some big money. I bet. Yeah, Bri, uh, Datsun was the the precursor to Nissan. <laughs> You know we have Joel from we have Joel from Arizona Imports in here, and he started out working in a Datsun dealer, and then eventually it was a Nissan dealer. I was like, dude, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I, like I said, my parents we had a Datsun five a B two ten. Yeah, so, for sure. What do you think? Let's we'll go, go with Jason in Tempe. He's got a 1999 Chevy Silverado. How can we help you, Jason? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, I have a um, 1999 Chevy Silverado, and um, when I start off at the light, it uh, doesn't want to shift, uh, I guess, into second gear. Uh, it gets up to about 3,000 RPM and maybe about 25 miles. And then I give it a few seconds and, and let the RPMs come back down, and it'll, it'll shift. Um, not really hard. And then uh, it'll progress through second, third, fourth, fifth, or whatever, and, and it runs just fine. I've had the motor rebuilt or the transmission rebuilt about five years ago how does, um, does reverse work okay yeah reverse works fine okay there's only i mean there's uh in that transmission there's something called a two four band and uh you may be having a band issue because what's happening is you know you get going in first gear it's not actually shifting into second gear when you let off the gas a little bit it's actually going into third gear is what's happening so sometimes when you lose a gear and that transmission will generally lose two things at a time. So it would be second and fourth gear. Sometimes you may, be, you may be missing first gear, and you're actually starting out in second. You know, so there's something missing there. And one way to kind of help yourself figure that out is to try manually shifting it. You know, you get the shift lever that's got one, two, three, and overdrive. Well, you can, you can manually manipulate that to see what's actually missing from it. But we could have a band issue. Now, when they get a solenoid issue, which is not uncommon, they'll have second and third, but they're not going to have first and fourth, or they'll be messing, missing second and third, and they got, you know, either way, 
there's d- different combinations of things that can happen. Hey, you know, I'm going to ask you something. Just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call in, <clears throat> ring, ring, car guy, transmission <laughs> expert over there. You know, my excursion, every time I put it, and I accidentally will drop it down maybe in the first, or I'm not paying attention, just drop it down. You go to accelerate, it's just got nothing there. It's like it's dead, but you put it in drive and it's perfect. Maybe I'm actually putting it in third gear and starting off in third gear, and that's why. Yeah, just, what year is that? Oh, five. Oh, five. So I think it's a 5R110 transmission, and they will actually go with what other whatever gear you put it in. So if you put it in third, it will start you out in third. It won't, It's not starting you out in first. It's okay. starting you out in third. So I was wondering about on. that. I've, I've done that, and I just go like, oh, wait a minute. That car's coming a lot faster than I'm moving. I'm in, Man, it's a good thing I had an here. answer for you. I was a lot of pressure, like I mechanic know. to mechanic. You know? Right, I know. I'll hold your feet to the fire. <laughs> so anyhow, we come back. We've got Jacob, Jason, Larry, and Dale. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. In life, there are certain relationships outside of family and friends that are important. For instance, if your car breaks down, you want to have a relationship with an auto repair shop that you trust to repair your car. The same goes for your doctor, your accountant, and your attorney. Why? Because the services they provide involve health and financial decisions, and it's important to hire a trusted professional. This same principle applies to real estate. Hi, I'm Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. For most of us, our home is the largest financial commitment and asset we will own in our lifetime. So when you decide to sell, it's important to hire a professional, knowledgeable real estate agent that you can trust to represent your interests and provide the best customer service available. If you would like a consultation to help determine the value and discuss a comprehensive marketing plan to sell your home, please visit my website at lisareneehenry.com. That's Lisa Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Henry.com. Come experience the difference a great real estate agent can make. Get ready for the Good Guys 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th to the 20th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 3,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and classics on display. Put your car and driving skills to the test in the Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition and earn a shot to compete in the Duel in the Desert Autocross Shootout Final. Plus, bring out those late models on Sunday for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration. Open to all years of American-made or powered vehicle. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, We send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're helping you with your car. And I did want to mention Bumper to Bumper Radio. We had Betty ben- Betsy Bennett on from Good Guys Car Show talking about the car show that's coming up. Another place you can buy tickets, you can go to Bumper to Bumper Radio dot com. Uh, a lot of great things there as far as if you're looking for a shop, that's there. There's an icon for Good Guys Car Show, and that'll take you where you need to go to buy tickets to go see that great event. And, Matt, we've got to get to Jacob, Larry, and Dale. Hey, real quick before we do that, you know, there's – I'm asking for some people to call in or send us some emails. If you have a cars and coffee group around town, I know there's one over in Scottsdale around Ganey Ranch area or wherever they are, we'd like to hear from you. We want to check out some of your cars and coffee events. So if you, if you uh, have one, send us a message to uh, – uh, you can go to bumper to bumper radio.com and find it there. Go to the contact page and, and uh, contact, get a hold of Dave Rye if if, uh, if you have one of those. That would be great. So. For sure. We're going to go with Dale in Phoenix. He's got a 1999 Chevy Silverado. How can we help you, Dale? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Well, good afternoon. The car was recently um, acquired by me. I got a really good deal from a friend who, um, or the truck was uh, recently. Um, he took really good care of it. My car had broken down. I needed a replacement. Is there anything about this vehicle that you gentlemen would know about that would give me a heads up of what I need to look for? It's got over 300,000 miles on it. Oof, I wouldn't have bought one of those. No, I'm joking. <laughs> 99 Chevy? No way. You better return that one. What engine do you have in your – you know what the engine's in that one? 
I actually do not. Oh, it's fifteen hundred. Okay, yeah. it can be like a five point three or a four point eight. Yeah, it's pretty typical uh, for those things. So. I think I think it's a matter, you know, is there anything you need to be aware of or anything like that? That's where it's going to come down to, you know, having the car looked over. You know, I know you bought it from a friend. I know it was all taken care of, but now it's now it's your baby. Uh, and and having it having that thing checked over head to toe just to see, because you're going to look at an older car, and that, there's going to be a lot of things you're going to find wrong, but a lot of things don't really matter all that much. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, so and that's sometimes when I'm talking to technicians, like, hey, you know, we're not we're not rebuilding this car. It was only new once. You know, so what kind of stuff do I need to be aware of? What's important? Which, you know, and that's going to happen from a technician looking it over from, you know, from end to end. And that's not the – some places you go and you get an oil change and they say we do a 27-point inspection, you know. And that's, that's stuff not, like we just check the washer bottle, great. Okay, that's that's one point. But you want to know what, the, what kind of condition the brakes are in. You want to know if there's any diagnostic trouble code stored in the system. Uh, you want to know if there's any telltale signs of things that are wearing out that are going to cause you to be on the side of the road that you don't want to have to deal with. What, what I would suggest, too, is fine. if there's something, you know, you've had the truck for a few weeks now, whatever. If there's anything that really just annoys you or bothers you, go get that taken care of. That way you're going to enjoy the truck. Maybe there's a rattle or there's something going on that just bugs you. Go get the things that bother you fixed. And I think it's a good idea. You know, it happens to us a lot, Dave. We, we've been taking care of a car for so long, and the new owner of that car continues to bring it back to us. So we have a new customer out of it, but it's a car that we're very familiar with. So, Dale, if you know where your friend's been taking his car, if he's very happy with them, and, in fact, that truck is in great shape, maybe you want to just continue to let those guys service that truck and take care of it for you as well. And if you don't have that guy or they don't, then, of course, you've got bumper to bumperradiocom You can find one. Well, thanks so much for the call. Let's go with Jacob in Gilbert. He's got a 2014 Chevy Silverado. It's Datsun and Silverado Day. How can we help you, Jacob? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How's it going? Fantastic. Got this uh, 14 Silverado, 40,000 miles on it. Uh, just got a two-month-old interstate battery in it. The old one's already taken a crap. But uh, my question is about flex fuel. Um, I had some buddies of mine tell me that... Uh, Maybe do two or three tanks of it and then run regular through it? Nope. To kind of keep it clean? Nope. Um, I don't get as good as fuel mileage with the E85, but it's a little bit peppier. Mm. But I just, uh, it's convenient for me to get it. Um, it, is convenient. Really... it is convenient for th- for you to buy? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right next to my house, so that's good. But, uh, you know, I don't, I haven't done the math on this in some time, but back when the fuel prices were really high, there, there's a point where the E85 is not worth buying because there is less energy per gallon or per micron or per whatever, however they measure the fuel. There's less energy produced out of that fuel than there is gasoline. So if the price point is not right, you're not doing any better by burning that fuel. Now, if it's convenient, but I've heard you know some horror stories that that fuel can be very corrosive. There's some issues with it. I would tend to just want to stick with one or the other. But, again, that's probably, Dave, I don't, it's just opinion. It's just conjecture at this point. It's what, you know. Yeah, personal preference. It, if you yeah. just want to do something different. I mean, some people just like to, you know, be a little out of the box, you know. Yeah, but it's kind of like the oil. If you're using different brands of oil, it's got different conditioners, different detergents. It may clean things differently. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a question in itself. So, hey, thanks for the call, Jacob. And there's probably other people out there wondering the same thing. You know, when you guys call with questions, it helps other people answer their questions because they go, oh, yeah, you know, I was kind of thinking the same thing and kind of may, may spark something in your mind or something you want to know about. So let's go with Michael in Youngtown, 05 GMC Yukon. How can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah. Can you hear me? For sure. You're with us. All right. My hearing aid is not working too good, but I have this 05 GMC Yukon. And my son has the 02 uh, Chevy uh, Silverado pickup with the same engine, the 5.3. And I noticed that on his also, the, when you start it in the mornings, you have that tapping noise. Mm-hmm. And uh, mine does the same thing, except it seems like it lasts a little longer in the morning. And then if I let it sit for a little bit, but if I take off, I sound like, it sounds like I'm driving a, a toy that you wind up. How's the oil pressure on the gauge? Uh, the oil pressure, I don't know if it's, uh, it's, it's staying right up there, you know, okay. past the, by the 40. Even when it's making noise? 
Yes, uh-huh. Ambulance making noise. Well, these Chevrolet engines in that era, I think around the 99 time when it went to the 5.3, they do have some common problems. And I, as a matter of fact, I have a friend of mine that just had her Yukon in the shop the other day. The engine's making some noise. The oil pressure on that engine is very low. Uh, we did a mechanical test of the oil, and it and it is low. There's enough pressure there. Boy, that thing really rattles hard on startup, but it goes away. It is the beginning of the end of that engine, mm. most likely. Mm. Um, it, it you know GM has problems with these. They see them in that 150,000 mile range. They get camshafts, lifters, but heck, you, you're you're halfway to a complete engine overhaul by that point. So. Um, and I know there's, there's, I mean, there's some other, you know, t- you know, wrist pin type noises and other things like that. And I, I'm not hearing the noise, so I don't know. Well, you know. yeah, but I was going to go there. Another area, um, he said the oil pressure, the noise is still there with the oil pressure. So that leads me to believe we actually have now have a real problem. If you have that first tick start up in the morning, rattle and then it goes away. Those Chevy engines, there's an O-ring on the oil pump pickup tube that hardens up and dries and it sucks air instead of oil so you don't get the oil pressure first thing in the morning until it can suck enough oil or build some temperature to swell that seal a little bit so there are some tests you can do and i forget which side of the car but you want to jack up for example the oil pickup tube is on the right side of the engine so what we do in the shop we jack up the left side of the car maybe overfill it by core oil and what we're going to do we're going to submerse that o-ring that's normally sucking air we're going to su- we're going to cover that in oil so if the car you know you got the left side of the car up two and a half feet in the air and the thing starts up and doesn't rattle we know that that o-ring is sucking air and that can remedy that ticking problem but if the ticking problem is there and your oil pressure is good, you probably have something that needs to be investigated further, but it could be the beginning of a problem that's not a quick fix. Well, we got a couple seconds for Larry in Phoenix. He's got a 19, 1993 Camry. How can we help you, Larry? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, I'm, I've got an automatic transmission on a on a, v, on a six-cylinder engine, and uh, uh, the disc stick doesn't want to go in. It hits something really hard, and so... Uh, I don't know what to do. I can't check the deal. I started having trouble yesterday. I don't know if it's the CVR or the transmission. But I, I need to replace the axles anyway. But I need to be able to check the fluid when I do the fluid. You know, I'm thinking, I hate Toyota dipstick tubes. Man, they are the tightest, you know, they're just the grouchiest dipstick, you know, tubes. And getting a dipstick down in there is a, is a pain in the neck. But there may be some sort of kink it's preventing that thing from going in all the way, but there's no, there's nothing in there that's going to block it from going down all the way. So, um, <laughs> anyhow, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we we'll, should be back next week. Bumper to bumper <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Have a- Trust. It's hard to earn, and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Get ready for the Good Guys 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th to the 20th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 3,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and classics on display. Put your car and driving skills to the test in the Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition and earn a shot to compete in the Duel in the Desert Autocross Shootout Final. Plus, bring out those late models on Sunday for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration. Open to all years of American-made or powered vehicles. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com calling all golfers scratch duffers sandbaggers and every skill level in between this is your chance to win one million dollars come out to the wells fargo fiesta bowl million dollar hole in one at the arizona biltmore golf club november 3rd through the 13th here's how it works purchase a bag of 11 balls for ten dollars and hit as many balls as you want 20 prizes will be awarded daily with the finals on sunday november 13th fiesta bowl creating champions on and off the field for more information please visit at FiestaBowl.org. I'm Matt Allen. And I'm Dave Riccio. We're the KTR Car Guys. 
For the best advice for your car or truck, join Matt and I on Bumper to Bumper Radio every Saturday at 11 on KTR News 92.3. If you're not sure who to trust when it comes to your car, give us a call. We'll solve what's causing the problem or send you to someone who can make it go away. Drive in anxious, cruise out feeling fine with Bumper to Bumper Radio. And remember, 24-7, BumperToBumperRadio.com. It's a must for the best car and body shops you can trust.